Mics, cameras, symbolic action. Audio-visual rhetoric for writing teachers is a provocative book by Bump Halbretter that positions movie making as a legitimate form of writing in the writing classroom. Halbretter is an associate professor in the Department of Writing, Rhetoric, and American Cultures at Michigan State University. Early in the book, he reveals, This book emerges from its author's dissatisfaction with established definitions of writing, definitions that did not allow him to derive all the properties of his own writing and writerly actions. Given this impetus, Halbetter's primary goals in writing this book are 1. To expand the definition of writing and 2. To situate this expanded definition in the context of teaching academic writers. He pursues these goals throughout the book, engaging in what Kenneth Burke calls terministic catharsis by adding new ways of thinking about writing and rethinking some of the old ways. In Chapter 1, Halbretter begins the process of expanding the definition of writing using Kenneth Burke's concept of symbolic action as presented in his 1966 book, Language as Symbolic Action. He quickly notes, however, that Burke's definition of symbolic action in this book is limited to language and points out that his 1978 essay, Non-Symbolic Motion, Symbolic Action, broadens his notion of symbolic action. In Burke's words, quote, action, as so defined, would involve modes of behavior made possible by the acquiring of a conventional, arbitrary symbol system a definition that would apply to modes of symbolicity as different as primitive speech, styles of music, painting, sculpture, dance, highly developed mathematical nomenclatures, traffic signals, road maps, or mere dreams." Unquote. After presenting this quote, Hellbretter writes, I suggest that we embrace the larger territory of Burke's symbolic action a territory that includes language as only one of the conventional arbitrary symbol systems at a writer's disposal. At this point, Halbretter enlists a number of scholars to assist him in expanding the definition of writing. For example, from Lawrence Lessig, he brings to the table the concept of remix as writing. And from Patricia Dunn, he borrows the idea of multisensory options as an avenue for engaging students with various learning styles. Interestingly, Halbretter leaves out significant voices from the computers and writing community, most notably Cynthia Self, who have long argued for a broader definition of writing. But despite this limitation, the chapter moves the definition of writing toward a new key. In Chapter 2, Halbretter begins to discuss the teaching of 21st century writing by considering the learning goals of the writing classroom. Specifically, he focuses on Donald Murray's 1972 essay, Teach Writing as a Process, Not Product, and the 10 Implications Murray Presents for Process Pedagogy. To update Murray's implications for the 21st century, Halbretter uses the metaphor of retuning the practice of changing the standard tuning of a string instrument to achieve a desired sound. His goal is to listen for places where Murray's ideas resonate with his expanded definition of writing and places where Murray's ideas need to be retuned. For example, his retuning of Murray's third implication reads, Students use their own forms of symbolic action. Too often, we teach writing to our students as if it were a foreign form of symbolic action. Actually, most of our students have learned a great deal of forms of symbolic action before they come to us, and they are quite willing to exploit those forms of symbolic action if they are allowed to embark on a serious search for their own truth. By engaging in this retuning process, Halbretter successfully transforms Murray's implications into a teaching philosophy for 21st century writing where 
Carefully scaffolded learning goals are the true products of the process-based writing course. In Chapter 3, Halbrader introduces new terminology into the conversation on audiovisual writing, multidimensional rhetoric. According to Halbrader, video production involves still and moving images, text, animations, visual transitions and effects, and a soundtrack that may feature audio that is tied to the visual track, sound effects that are overdubbed, and or voiceover narration. These elements of video production are the layers of multidimensional rhetoric and might be best understood through a simple demonstration. Let's begin with the sound of a speaking voice, otherwise known as voiceover narration. This is a single layer. If we add a musical soundtrack, then we have two layers. Video footage of myself sitting at my dining room table working on my MacBook Pro constitutes a third layer. Written text that explicitly labels the visual information, writing space, is a fourth layer. Halbrader argues that multidimensional rhetoric is valuable for teaching audiovisual writing because there are times when we need to be able to consider audiovisual text as being all there at once and times when we need to break these texts into precisely determined component pieces so that they may be layered in new ways to meet new rhetorical aims. In the next two chapters, he dives into the technological tools needed to create the layers of multidimensional rhetoric, namely microphones and cameras. In Chapter 4, Halbrader discusses microphones in great detail. He reviews different types of mics, explains their recording patterns, and suggests several room layouts for different recording situations. In Chapter 5, he focuses on cameras, but instead of reviewing different types of equipment, he offers 10 important rules for video recording, such as Rule number 3. Audio-visual writers choose cameras according to their rhetorical purposes. And, rule number seven, the white balance is the right balance. Admittedly, these two chapters are a bit technical. Also, readers who have limited access to technology might feel somewhat excluded by the discussion of audio-visual equipment. But for those who do have access, the technical knowledge Halbrader shares is invaluable for helping writing teachers feel more comfortable with the tools of audiovisual writing. In Chapter 6, Halbrader brings it all together by answering the proverbial question on every writing teacher's mind. How do I teach this stuff Monday morning? His answer? We use audio-visual writing to address problems that exist in the writing classroom. Problems such as using metaphors and engaging in inquiry. For each writing problem, Halbrader explains the problem, discusses the theory underpinning it, identifies the lesson and learning goals related to it, describes an assignment for addressing the problem, explains how the assignment might be delivered, and advocates an approach to assessing the deliverables. In regards to assessment, Halbrader offers the following advice. Assess the lesson and learning goals, not the assignment. As long as our learning goals are met, our assignments are working. Consequently, the products of our students' efforts do not need to be scrutinized under the rubric of audience expectations for professional or publishable movie making. To make this advice concrete, Halbrader presents an example of a scoring rubric that he created collaboratively with his students for a documentary project. Mike's Camera Symbolic Action is a valuable contribution to the theory and practice of teaching audiovisual writing and rightly deserves the 2013 Distinguished Book Award from Computers and Composition. Not only will writing teachers come away with an expanded definition of writing, 
and knowledge regarding the tools and pedagogy to engage students in composing audiovisual texts, but they also might be challenged to rethink their notions of the process-based writing course.